Hello everyone. Well, in this video, I'm going to develop a custom keyword that will read the value from the web table. So here I'm going to add a keyword called grid helper. And this will be inside the package com.helper.grid. So the approach which I'm going to use is while using this keyword, the user need to supply following argument. The first one is the test object for the web table. Second is the row index and third is the column index. Again, this design is completely depending on the individual how they want to implement it. But in my case, I will expect this value from the user in which the test object for the web table which will represent the base x path the row and the column index from which you want to read the value okay so if you observe closely to our x path in this case you can consider this part as a base path okay so this is your base x path for table okay after that if I want to read the value from a specific row and column, I just need to append this part. So this is the X path which will keep on changing. And this will completely depend upon the row and the column index. Okay. So that is the reason I am expecting from the user to provide all these th three information. That is the test object of the, ba of the web table with base X path. And the row and in column index of which the user want to read the value okay so here i will create a public method public the return type of this method is a string because we are reading the value from the web table and let me call it as get value from table or let me make it grid the first argument is the test object so base test object second is the row index and third argument is the column index okay so during the runtime I will receive this test object with base X path and along with the row index and the column index so during the runtime I need to design my x path in this manner and create a new test object okay using this as we know that the test object which reside in the object repository they cannot be modified during the runtime so what i'm going to do using the base test object i will fetch this x path append with this value and construct a new test object so this will become more clear when we write the code so here i will create one more private method private the return type is test object because this is going to return as the updated test object get test object so here the argument is the test object which will be base test object then string the remaining x path so the step is first one get the base x path from the test object append the additional x path create a new test object and return the test object
okay so these are the steps which this method will do so in order to get get the x path from the base test object there is a method called get value so first we will use the base test object dot get so there is a method called get property which will give you the list of property which is present inside this test object okay and as we know that there will be only one property which is present inside the test object which is the hex path okay so this is going to return us the list which will contain all the properties and i want the first property that is the hex path so that can be get using the index value and here i am supplying the index value as zero so in other words this statement will return a list and i am fetching the zeroth value of that list so if you look at here this is going to return us the type called test object property so let me open the api documentation So if you look at here, there is a method called get properties. Okay. So this is the method which we use. As you can see here, it is going to return us the list of test object property. So using the method called get at index zero, it is going to return us the first element in the list, which is a type of test object property. And inside this, you can see here, we can get the name of the property as well as the value. So in our case, if I use get name, this will return as the x path because in our test object, let's say this one. So we have only one property that is the x path. So this is the name and this is the value. So here, here if I use get name, it is going to return as the x path. And if I use the get value, this will return as the value. Okay. So instead of using get name, I will just get the value okay so this will give me a string which will have the base x path okay base x path after that i'm going to append the base x path with the rest of the x path which is this part so here i will use base x path equal to base x path plus the x path which will come as an argument and using this i will create a new test object so for that just use test object class test object updated test object equal to new test object let me call it as grid and i'm going to add that property inside this test object dot add property so x path condition type dot equals and the base x path or let me call it as updated x path to avoid the confusion and i am going to return this test object okay now here i will call this method so test object updated test object equal to get test object the base test object will be the web table test object followed by string so this is the thing which we need to append and i'm going to make it with row index and the column index so this will be your row index 
and similarly this will be your column index and then we will call the method to get the value so return return web ui dot get text and the test object is this one okay and at the end just add the attribute that is or annotation at the red keyword this with this so this is how you design the keyword for reading the value from the web table and again this implementation will vary based on the individual design so that's all for this video and thanks for watching